good evening everyone good evening uh, are we ready to start uh, with that yeah i think we are uh, just a heads up to all the participants we have disabled the option for you all to unmute yourselves so that it is uh, we can all experience the session properly in case you have a question or you want to ask something just send up send us a message on the chat box and we'll unmute you great so uh, a very good evening ladies and gentlemen my young friends and everyone who has joined us today a very warm welcome to this interactive session on spirituality and youth universal spirituality and humanity foundation has been organizing the world conference of humanity power and spirituality since 2010 a unique platform where spirituality meets humanity we believe that children and youth are the future of the country and their consciousness has to be transformed through spiritual alchemy to gain inner power to cope with life's challenges to ascend from human thinking to divine understanding their positive energy has to be aroused to maintain life's balance by having faith in oneself and respect for others the world conference has witnessed over a thousand speakers from different faith and vocations from different parts of the world including humanists and illuminates dignitaries and professionals leaders and learned men they all have come here and utilized the confluence platform to convey their thoughts on how to enrich the body mind and soul in its integrality and to make our life more meaningful with a purpose and direction over 25000 students have participated in our events we have approached over 40000 schools in india and abroad giving them an edifying theme on spirituality for an essay competition for which we have received a hearty response this was classified according to different age groups and successful candidates were given awards and their essays were printed in our premium magazine business economics we have organized several debates on different topics related to spirituality where many colleges and schools have participated the purpose was to inspire them to follow the path to spirituality thousands of children with special abilities have participated over the years in a sit and draw competition inspiring them to be creative and awakening their inner power several renowned artists have also been present to motivate them in their journey to face the challenges and march ahead on a spiritual path we have also organized several cultural programs for children consisting of different age groups encouraging them to align their thoughts spiritually to serve humanity and protect mother earth we now look forward to an exciting session ahead because i believe that we cannot always build the future of our youth but with spirituality we can build our youth for the future i will now request dr h p kadoria our chairman of universal spirituality and humanity foundation to address this interactive session dr kadoria brother and sister and dear you the pandemic has been greatly affecting the lives of all globally all are making a first to combat it we are the manifestation of the cosmic entity god we are his children divine and perfect all being his children we are endowed with love virtue ocean of strength infinite knowledge and infinite power we are being governed by the illusion we have to awaken our inner power spirituality is the sense of life it awakens inner power it develops body mind and soul it ignites the spirit with the strength and joy it gives insight perception and intuition in complexity of life in the complex material world it is tendent one to overcome failure and to climb the ladder of success failures become a stepping stone it gives new vitality it disciplines and balances the life 
if we break the word spirituality, it is a spirit and eternity. A spirit is the quality. A spirituality helps to develop personality with individuality. It motivates to do hard work, have integrity, discipline, faith and love for all and the supreme law. It leads it leads one to be courageous and fearless. It promotes to have pure food that develop the body, mind, and soul. Religion is a part of spirituality. Swami, you can say, manifest a spirituality within you. Mark, if you give up a spirituality, the result will be that in three generations, you will be extinct. Swami Vivekananda called upon the youth to build up muscles of iron and now of steel. Be courageous, be courageous and fearless and fearless. Face the bruise, face the maya, face the death. Cowards can never be victorious. Have faith in yourself. You are the children of God. You are the seller of immortal bliss. Be a lion and lioness, not a sheep. Achieve happiness and getness. Be a spiritual and rely truth for yourself. Let us all remember his teaching today before we start this, this interactive session on spirituality and youth. Youth, the future of the world is you. I am glad to have so many youth on this platform and the speaker as the speakers, we will be guided by them and we follow the instructions. Arise, awake and stop, not till the goal is reached. Arise, awake and stop not till the goal is reached. Om Amen Ekumkara Ahura Mazda. Thank you all. My Love to all the youth. Thank you all. Uh, I would now request Vedant Lohia, a young enterprising entrepreneur who is involved in several social initiatives and who has been very closely associated with our World Confluence right from its inception. And he has also been inspiring the youth in different roles in the confluences which he has paid up uh, played over the years. So uh, Vedanta, I will now request you to introduce all our panelists for today and take the session forward. Sure. Thank you so much for that introduction. I hope you can all hear me properly. Uh, great. So we have a very interesting evening planned for you all. And this topic was chosen with a lot of thought because we re realized that spirituality for youth is a very interesting topic by itself and people need to hear about it and we have some stellar people in our panel today and i'm going to be introducing them they'll be uh, sharing their views on spirituality i personally think uh, the way they think the way they express is really uh, beautiful and there's so much to learn from them uh, and hence we wanted them to come be a part of this panel so that they can share their thoughts and they can inspire you so first we have uh, the lady in the house uh, minakshi Manakshi Krishnaraj is a final year PhD education candidate at the University of Sydney. Her focus is on exploring the role of education in supporting notions of self-fulfillment. She did her MPhil at the University of Cambridge. She explores both personally and academically the role of education in spirituality and fulfillment for individuals. She has launched a startup called MOVA for individuals to initiate discussions on various topics, including spirituality and explore varied perspectives. So that's Minakshi. Welcome, Minakshi. We also have Wait. Sunil Soni. So Sunil is an enthusiastic and fun mindfulness and meditation coach, specializing in the aspects of mind, emotions and meditation. Sunil has been practicing meditation for the last 12 years, since the age of 14 every single day, despite 24 hour flights, travel, events or whatnot, and he's a certified trainer. After 12 years of daily practice, 
attending several workshops, retreats, and certified courses. He has developed simple techniques that you can use to reap the basic benefits of a quiet mind without having to sit down for hours in meditation. Welcome, Sunil. Our third panelist is Suyash Surana. Suyash is a strong believer in holistic abundance and holds the opinion that the answer to all the challenges lie in the womb of silence. Since childhood, he has had a high proclivity towards spirituality and he loves to strike conversations around it almost always. To him, spirituality is an integral extension of himself. Welcome, Suyash. So I'm just going to take the opportunity to unmute the three of you so that we can now begin our panel discussion. So audience, the format is going to be something like this, where we just have a few questions prepared so that we can get to hear the best out of them. And after these three questions that we have, in case you would like to ask anything, or if you have any question that's coming into your mind, just drop it on the chat box. And once we're done with these three questions, we'll definitely take as many questions as we can. So our first question is, and we'll start with Minakshi, the lady in the house. Uh, so what does spirituality mean to you, Minakshi? And you know, how has your definition of spirituality evolved uh, from like over time, like from younger age to now? Uh, thank you so much, Vedant, and thank you so much for having me be a part of this wonderful panel. Um, so spirituality, this question is very interesting because it's very difficult for me to actually articulate what spirituality is because it's a very innate part of who I am and it's something that almost feels very difficult to separate and point out what it is. But I think spirituality to me would be the self-awareness, the effort, the emotions, energy, and faith with which I move forward and continue my life. And it's something that happens in every moment. With respect to definitions of self, uh, spirituality and whether that has changed, definitely. I think when I was younger, it was something that was a lot more associated with religion. And then through my Guru Mahatriya, I also got to understand and experience what spirituality meant for me. And that's where I realized that a very important part of it, that each person has their own definition of spirituality. Interestingly, there's another aspect of it for me, which is that when we talk about spirituality, especially out loud and with other people or in academic circles or with respect to education, like you were saying, um, everyone has their own definition. And for something that is so personal, there seems to be a lot of social definitions for spirituality, whether it is about religion, culture, ideology, faith, or even mindfulness. And I think a lot of the beauty of what spirituality is to me is that it's a very personal journey that I personally define. But when I speak about it and when others speak about it, this question plays a very big role in understanding how they perceive what spirituality is. So thank you. That's really beautifully put, Manakshi. Thank you so much for your thoughts. Uh, going to Sunil. So Sunil, what is your take on this? Hi, Vedan. Thank you so much for having us here. Thanks to the entire organization, right? So <clears throat> one thing that struck my mind when I was thinking about these questions, Vedan, that when you think, take religion, right? Religion in its essence has a universal touch to it. So religion is for all. When you talk about spirituality, I think it becomes very personal. My spirituality need not be your spirituality, right? Your spirituality need not be Minakshi's. I think spirituality itself is a very personal um, agenda or discipline that you have for yourself. And keeping that in mind, if you ask me my own definition of spirituality, it comes with just living a lifestyle that adheres to giving you peace, giving others peace, giving you happiness and giving others happiness. I think I take it as simple as that. Any lifestyle that gives you and others peace and happiness is spirituality. And of course, it also involves a few disciplines that if you, if you practice will really help you. And when I mean few disciplines, they're not just meditation when you're practicing meditation, but also finding ways where you can bring meditation to what you do in real life. I heard this beautiful quote from this book, right? I read this quote where it said, as a practice, meditation is just like a sword. It's shiny, it's beautiful, you can show it off to people. But you need to use what you acquire in your meditation to slash through the illusions that are there in real life slash to your your temptations you, you can you have to bring what is there the entire ball of energy into your real life and finally if you ask me my final 
definition to spirituality is just anything that reduces the number of thoughts and noise in your head is your spirituality so that's the idea and how it has evolved over the time again as minakshi mentioned it was introduced as a religion to me right you do this god will be happy if you don't do this god will get mad at you or something like that but as it progressed it became very personal just me and my god it does not have any other people involved so that is spirituality to me thank you that's really re- really nicely put sunil thank you for that so yash what are your thoughts on this hey vedant first of all thank you been uh, very excited for this discussion because i love conversations like this what spirituality means to individuals what an amazing chance to learn from so many different people right with their beautiful thought processes so i have a cute little small story that i want to start this entire discussion with which will i think make a lot of impact so there's one man who comes to you know who goes to an enlightened human and he says that my lord who is the most enlightened who is the most purest or the most spiritual person in this entire town or in this in, in this entire space right now and the enlightened one he points out to bharat and bharat is a chakravarti so chakravarti in the sense the a person who owns the entirety of you know the universe or someone who owns the entirety of the land that is available this man says how can bharat who is so materialistic who has so much land so much abundance how can even have spirituality in his essence right and the story sort of uh, made me reponder and rethink and this kind of also answers the second question so bharat being the emperor being the chakravarti he is he says come i'll say i'll say you something come to me uh he goes to his uh his court 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 room next next day and bharat says here is his entire pot full of oil right to the brim he says go around ayodhya so ayodhya is the uh, this is not the rama and ayodhya another so he goes around the city he says go around go around the city and come back to me and remember if even a single drop of oil foil, falls out from this pot right i'll cut your head off and this man who who comes to the enlightened one seeking an answer is now fear like why did i even ask that question now my life is at stake you know but he's like you know it's a, it's the order from the emperor so he takes that pot of oil and he goes around you know the entire city and comes back and he you know then uh, bharat the chakravarti asks this uh, this you know this seeker he says so how did you like the carnival that happened in you know the entire city how did you like this the beauty of the city how did you like the dances that happened so there was celebration going on that time so this man says what all that happened my focus was entirely in this pot you know making sure that nothing not even a single drop falls or because to me my life is precious and that's when that chakravarti says you know that similarly like this entire mass of land this entire army this entire treasure is all mine but my focus is not attached in this outer world it is in inside me where my spirituality actually lies where my soul resides and i think this redefined spirituality for me that who says we have to leave everything that we have to you know find spiritual abundance or who says we have to you know drop these illusions of world the fact is that you have to stop living in the outside and start living in the inside and to me that what that is exactly what spirituality means my ability to stay detached to everything that's happening outside and at the same time walking in the same corridors where there will be people who have who are seeking different sorts of desires who are having needs of all kinds and when i'm walking in that corridor still maintaining my peace still maintaining my tranquility and not being wavered by what's happening outside that to me is spirituality and this entire story is my evolution of where i i'm seeing spirituality from right now and i'm sure as we move forward as we progress as we listen to more stories more people more discussions this will keep evolving and i just hope it keeps evolving for the best but that's my answer that's so well put suyash thank you uh, for you know bringing out the essence of spirituality through a beautiful story uh, it it really gave a great perspective to all of us uh, suyash so just want to check if you can hear me because uh, there's a slight lag from my end you can hear me yes i can absolutely hear you oh, perfect so thanks suyash for that thanks sunil thanks manakshi gave a great perspective to understand that uh, the spirituality to all of us was introduced as a religion and how it's evolved is just so personal for each of us so that uh, takes me to my second question that we have and my second question to you is uh, you know are there any spiritual practices that you all practice on a daily basis and if you all can elaborate how do you all feel after those practices in particular minakshi will start with you um thank you so much um i think with respect to spiritual practices for me it 
while my ideal of doing a particular action for spirituality is sometimes in an action, sometimes it's just an integral part of how my day is. Um, one thing that spirituality is to me is that moment of reflection, moment of silence, moment of gratitude that I have in my day, whether it is actually actively sitting in the seat of silence sometimes. Sometimes that moment comes in the middle of the day. Sometimes it comes in the morning cup of coffee when I'm sitting in the balcony and re recognizing that this is what the plan of today is. So with respect to what I feel at the end of it, it actually differs. There is a lot of centeredness. There's a lot of awareness. There's a lot of gratitude and positive emotion at the end of these spiritual practices as we call them. But there is also something that is very specific to that day, right? Because there are days when you're feeling agitated and that particular action calms you down. There are days when you're feeling lethargic and you don't want to do anything and that particular action gives you that energy and that boost to go forward and do the next thing. Sometimes spiritual practices are a lot more subtle for me because I find engaging with, say, spending time with my family, spending time with my pets or anything as a very spiritual thing. I even find reading to be a very spiritual action, if we can call it that. So that was the main aspect of it. And with respect to how I feel when I engage in these particular um, facets of uh, spiritual practices. There was a poem that I once read, which I'm not gonna tell you the whole poem, but a very short essence which said, um, if you're ever feeling lonely, just think about the signs that matter can neither be created nor destroyed. So that means today those atoms that call your home, call your, call your smile their home was once part of the universe outside. And that feeling you get of being connected to something bigger and not feeling hopeless, not feeling lonely is something that permanently exists when you feel a lot more invested. And that's not, while sometimes it is at the end of a spiritual practice, the more you make it an integral part of your life, at least for me, it is a feeling that can happen at any stage. And it's something that continues to happen, not at the end of a particular practice or a process alone. Awesome, Minakshi. That, that's really interesting. That's a great perspective, in fact. So once you start practicing these spiritual practices, I think the feeling becomes integral to your entire existence. And you can feel that way whenever you possibly want to. That's beautiful. Uh, Sunil, we would love to hear your thoughts on this. Yes, Vedant. So one of the things that's very, I feel is very essential when it comes to any form of a spiritual practice that you be disciplined at it. You've got to do it on a consistent basis, right? And just today, I was reading this book on pranic healing and it said something very beautiful. If you can just bring your body, your breath and bring attention to whatever it is you're doing, that can become a spiritual process, right? And personally, my, as you asked, my spiritual uh, discipline would be just practicing non-doing, just sitting quietly and practicing a technique to shut this, to reduce the number of thoughts. And I, I do Surya Namaskar on a daily basis. Luckily, it just happened in my life and same meditation and I see them complementing each other. So anything basically how Minakshi is saying can be anything when you're reading a book right as long as any of these factors are actively involved either your body is in a motion with your your concentration on your breath and bring your mind to it I think that can become your uh, spiritual discipline and personally if you ask me I think we all need one anchor of a strong discipline activity to take care of us because right now if you ask me if I have a therapist if I have a friend if I have a go-to refugee place it would be my meditation practice Anything happens, right? If the world cannot understand me, if I'm feeling low or if I'm feeling great, I feel at home in that practice. And sometimes I feel, you know, uh, the Hindu religion or the various traditions that we've had, they have gods for so many everything. Like every other thing, there is a god, right? For money, for knowledge. Sometimes I genuinely feel you should have a god for practices. We are nothing without our practices. I don't know if there is a specific god in any uh, spiritual tradition, I feel there should be an icon for just practices because practices is what makes you who you are. Your habits decide your future, not you. And uh, so that's my take on my discipline and what spiritual discipline means to me. Awesome, Sulan. And it's really inspiring, you know, to hear your thing as how from the last 12 years you've been following a practice uh, and the kind of uh, uh, effect that you see of this practice in your daily life. I, you'll share more about it definitely, but it's just amazing to hear that. So, yes, what are your thoughts? So I mean, Meenakshi and Sunil definitely gave a very beautiful idea you know, that anything, you know, anything can become your spiritual practice. 
but the way i look at it you know the our i think everything is a spiritual practice if you're just living with the awareness with the fact that is it taking me closer to divinity is it taking me closer to my ultimate goal right then every single action that you take becomes a spiritual practice and then you don't have to feel something after the practice you are continuously feeling the process or continuously in the motion right a lot of us go through this emotion probably sometimes you know once a week sometimes once a year sometimes once in a lifetime but we you know a very a few lucky ones of us get to experience it on a daily basis but this is what it feels like that you don't need a spiritual practice you don't need a separate time it adds it's a big advantage if you do that you know you spend that few minutes of silence you have a practice you do it it's beautiful that's why religion is there you know the entire beauty needs to be put in a certain methodical process you know approaches in which people can practice that's why the importance of religion comes in right the whole practice perspective of spirituality is religion religion is spirituality put into practices so definitely there has to be religious part of it but the way i see it there is no spiritual practice you know once you truly start aligning yourself with spirituality with your with that entire process everything is spiritual everything is a practice everything is just taking you closer to your divinity is taking you closer to your faith it's just it's just enhancing the process and even you know while taking a while taking a coffee break it'll be a beautiful moment and even when you're in the bathroom singing in the shower or taking you know a shit basically that because of what you're doing you'll enjoy the process and that's when you know you're going closer to divinity so that's my take on the practice part of it awesome so i think just enjoying what you're doing adds so much spiritual essence to whatever you're doing that that's that's a great perspective to live with yash sunil i think we have a comment from someone uh, aditya and he says that uh, vishnu is considered the god of karma and he is the one you know who guides one through their duties so just uh, since you've mentioned the uh, fact that you know there should be a god for practices or something of that sort i think aditya just wanted to share some information on that uh, i'll go to my third and last question and if anyone yeah. in the audience uh, can i just quickly reply back to aditya i just have a quick thing to say you know that uh, sure. Or before we go to the next question, which is very important and you know sort of brings the entire crux of spirituality, that in all religions, right, there is no specific god of you know who believes in consistency. There is no specific you know person who we go to when we have to do practices because the idea is that at the end of the day, right, it, with your actions, it is you alone. Like not even God can help you with your actions. That is the whole perspective in the spiritual realm. That when you and your spirituality are concerned, not even your God can help you. And that is exactly why there is no God. who will help you with your spiritual practices that is everything else can be taken care of but when it's your action and you it is no one else it just has to be you so i think that's one clarity that we are, we all can have thank you great so i think aditya agrees with you completely so i'll just go to my third question this is the last one i have for the panelists so in case anyone from the audience has any questions please type it in the chat box with the person's name who you want to address it to we'll be able to take one or two questions so my third question is we we have spoken about you know spiritual practices but i personally know that all of you are overachievers in even in the materialistic realm having startups of your own working with so many people and doing like such amazing things and backing people's life so how do you think in this sense and the other aspects of your life how do you think spirituality has helped or how has it improved these aspects of your life minakshi Ah uh, thank you sorry i put in unmute for a second um i find that question very interesting vedant because that means that we're obviously making a very big distinction between that which is spiritual and that which is material and on one hand yes it was a question of science and spirituality that which was proven and that which we thought was spiritual but if you look at the evolution of the concept of spirituality even in an indian context with the nationalist struggle you had this notion that modernity was western which was materialistic which was the outside and then created the dichotomy that that which is traditional that which is spiritual is inside and somehow we had to balance that which is one of the dichotomies that was created and it's something that unfortunately still persists that um these two are actions where you invest time in spirituality you invest time in your work you invest you do a particular practice for money you do a particular practice for your inner well being I'm not saying that as a person we don't invest in different practices over time for sure but I don't particularly see that distinction very apparently in my life I do not believe that if I'm engaging with spirituality it detracts or it is actually something distinct from material I'm not going to like 
in a very simple sense, if we're using that languaging, I can tell you that the energy and the enthusiasm and the faith helps me and guides me even in this realm. But I don't want to make that distinction that I have to take something from one aspect of my life and use it in another aspect. It's not like spirituality gives me energy and this takes away my energy, right? So it's one of those things that I feel like even that separation becomes a little hard. And I think what Sunil and Suyash were saying was very beautiful with respect to religion. But I think that one aspect of religion is that it created this dichotomy, right? It created this separation. And that's also one of the reasons where, if I'm being very honest with the first question that you asked, that's where my definition of spirituality started. And that is why I'm really grateful that it evolved from there to move away from what religion said, what spirituality said, what that your world, your achievement of being an overachiever is different than what you think is, you know, spirituality. And again, that's why if I could say something for people who stay away from spirituality, it's probably because people make that distinction, that it's something that they have to go out of their way, out of their lives, out of their success, out of everything to go and act, like practice. Whereas that's not the case. It's something that is very integral to all aspects of my life. If family is spiritual for me, then spirituality is family. It's not one way or the other, right? So that's what I would say. I wouldn't make that distinction of where my spirituality plays a role on my, in achieving something. Beautiful, Manakshi. I think that's really well put. Uh, I, I specifically wanted to ask that question, you know, because I find a lot of people's definition being very narrowed down into those buckets, saying this is spirituality. So the way you shared it, and, and I think at, at the peak of the mountain, everything becomes one and the same. So I think that's really beautifully put. Thanks. Uh, Sunit, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. So the moment you use the word spirituality, right? The very nature of spirituality is to integrate. The entire idea of, of science or the entire idea of our living has been to disconnect, to dis divide. This is this, this is that. The moment you use the word spirituality, the idea is to connect everything. So if you watch this movie called The Karate Kid, right? And uh, this, this kid comes to the master and he's like, so I want to learn to beat people up and all of that stuff. And the master gets really angry. He, he ends up using some Kung Fu moves and, uh, you know, almost beats up the kid. And then at one point when the kid is very overwhelmed with what, the sort of uh, input that's coming in, he holds the kid's shoulders and tell him, tells him Kung Fu does not uh, live in just fighting. Kung Fu lives in the way you treat people. Kung Fu lives in everything we do. It lives in how you put on a jacket, how you put off a jacket, how you work, how you don't work, etc. And that made so much sense to me, right? Because as, as we have yoga or we have any other spiritual practice, Kung Fu is a spiritual tradition that, that grew initially from a physical practice and then to a practice that can lead you to, to silence and all that, right? So again, as, as she's put it, right? Uh, spirituality perverges in everything we do. In fact, it should be like that. The moment you say, this is my spiritual practice, this is my materialistic life, I think you, you're going to head for a collision somewhere. And the more and more you work on your spiritual practices, your materialistic life will also have flower and uh, will flower with abundance. There is no, you can't, uh, it's like this, you know, if I was supposed to lift a car, if I'm, if I'm lifting a car, I lift the wheels as well, right? If, if, if I'm driving a car, I don't leave behind a wheel. It's part of the car. So spirituality is just an acceleration at the end of the day. You have to carry the entire car. You can't say, no, no, today, no, I'll keep on tire and come. It doesn't work. Right? You it, the very nature is to carry the entire, your entire gamut of living. And in the process, keep people in the car as well. Take people along with you. Don't, you don't need to walk it alone. Right? See if you can help others in the process. So, I think that's how I would take spirituality. Awesome. Sunil, thanks for sharing your thought. I think especially the example of the car, I think I'm going to personally remember it for a while. So thank you for that. Suyash, I'd love to hear from you. So I think Meenakshi and Sunil, you know, gave a very important perspective that you cannot divide, you cannot discriminate between your spiritual practices and how it enhances your life. Because at a point, they just merge, you know, there's just one harmony that's been intertwined with each other. But however, you know, because you're having a discussion, it is important that we break it down. We'll, we'll let people realize, you know, that, okay, this is why it is required or this is, you need to somehow, you know, break down the benefits into smaller chunks that people can consume, right? 
so many people who are here and they, I need to tell them what spirituality meant to me. It's not possible for me to tell you, okay, this is what it means. But because it is important that I put my expression out there so that they can understand what it means. Right? I'm going to do this uh, specific, cutting it down into a couple of parts, a couple of aspects that is important. That is how I see it enhancing my life. One, I think like all spiritual practices, you know, or the goal of all spiritual practices is to, to make you pure, you know, to clean the bottle from the inside, because see the bottle, the bottle can be really beautiful from the outside, but at the end of the day, if you see its functionality, you need to keep the bottle clean from the inside, you know, and only when the bottle is clean from inside water, that divine energy will start pouring in. So the biggest clarity that I, I think the, or the biggest way how spirituality has helped me is by helping me clean this bottle from the inside, you know. People call it different things. Religion calls it different things. Religion calls it, take, you know, finishing your karma, getting done with your karma, getting done with it. That's one spiritual practice. Certain people, right? If you look at the Shaolin process of it, it just says that it is to, you know, it is to bring your yin and yang to one specific point, you know, and then you become Zen. The different people have different answers, but they essentially what Sunil and Meenakshi said is, you know, that you cannot divide it into different aspects. It is, it is, you can see it's it enhancing it in every aspect of your life. But to progressively be able to, you know, that, that there is an awareness, okay, that where I was and where I'm standing, right? If I have to break my life in that aspect and see how it has enhanced, then I think the biggest beauty of spirituality that it has given to me is that, you know, there's this rag dvesh, there's this entire, you know, that attachment and hatred that's continuously going on in your head, right? You either like something or you hate something. You're, either, you're having this whole judgmental thing that why is this happening like this? What is happening and not happening? So I think what spirituality does is that it just gives you that entire peace. It gives you that entire, it gives you a certain sense of stability and, you know, security in that entire boom, like feeling that everything's going to manage itself. Don't worry. You know, it's going to happen. Your anger starts to, and as a result of that, you feel less angry. As a result of that, you feel lesser amount of greed in you. You feel more peaceful. You're more relaxed. And when that relaxation happens in the body, you, know, you can see the flow, how you talk to people, how you enjoy everything. Right. So even when I'm shouting at my employees at times, like I enjoy him that process. I'm like, why are you doing like this? You know, and then I'm like, then they learn from you and then they want to grow. So everything that is otherwise supposed to be a negative thing or has to have some negative context itself becomes a beautiful thing. So it just spiritually turns everything beautiful. I think that's how I like to put, you know, the one way it has enhanced is that it makes you more beautiful in everything that you're doing. Awesome. Suresh. Thanks for that. I think to sum everything up for all of what you've said, I think spirituality gives you a different specs in life. And with that specs, I think everything becomes, you know, much more beautiful, much more happy. So whatever you do is just a part of that. Uh, so that's great. Uh, we have time for just one question and we have a question by Avantika. So I'll be taking that since she hasn't mentioned the name, any of y'all can answer it. So she asks that she's very interested to know about the oneness with nature and awareness with our ecosystem, because she thinks that, you know, we as humans tend to become really focused on ourselves and our growth and our relationships. And we don't care a lot about the ecosystem and the environment. I'm not just talking about from, you know, an environment perspective, ecosystem could mean everything around it. Okay. So I think she wants to ask, how do we get more one with nature and more aware about our ecosystem? Anyone who would like to just take that quickly. Yeah. Thank you so much for that question, uh, Avantika. Uh, one with nature and one with ecosystem. To be honest, if you go in for a very basic level, right? If you can do any any spiritual practice or engage in anything that is spiritual or that makes you feel happy, peaceful, loving, or brings consciousness to guys, Prem Satchit Anand to whatever you do, it's going to take care of like multiple things at once. And if you're specifically working where you need to work with the ecosystem or you're trying to work with the environment or become one with nature, I think any spiritual practice that you do will get you there, you know, in a very basic and crude sense. And uh, one of the very beautiful things about nature is that nature never drains you of your energy. If you're spending time with nature, right? If you're with grass or you're observing the clouds or the beach or by the river, right? Or even observing the leaves and in your garden, right? Nature gives you energy. The other things that we do in a way tends to uh, drain of drain us of our energy. Nature in its very own uh, nature nurtures us, right? So to be honest, any spiritual practice, you can have a spiritual practice of just observing nature, even that can become a meditation practice and that can help you get close to nature. If that's, if that also, that's what her question is. 
Awesome. Uh, Avantika, we hope uh, Sunil was able to answer you. Vinash, you want to add something? Sure. Um, thank you, Vedant. Uh, I think one other aspect that I wanted to touch upon that Sunil wasn't talking about uh, when he said that nature gives you energy, that's very important. But I think when it comes to nature or ecosystem, your intention is very important. So what comes with your intention will always affect your relationship with it. Are you trying to go to a space because you want to contribute, you want to be there, you want to enjoy that? Or are you trying to exploit it in some way and gain something out of it? And sometimes when we talk about gain, is it a mutual gain? Are we still being sustainable? Are we still being realistic with what we're expecting? Or are we being greedy, like you said, that human beings think only of ourselves? So like in a very, very simplistic sense of spirituality, your intention will affect how you respond to a situation, whether it is nature, whether it's your family, whether it is anything, because that is the easiest way in which we can understand how we interact or how we live with something else. Awesome. Thanks, Manakshi, for adding that quick point uh, over there. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Suyash, Sunil, and Manakshi for joining us for this discussion. We would love to hear from all the participants. What was that one thing that they learned? So if you can, you know, quickly type that in the chat box, it'll really help us and make us feel that, okay, we were able to add value to your life in the last uh, 25 minutes. So thank you so much for joining us for that. But please do not log off because we have something spectacular and something very beautiful planned for you this evening. Uh, we understand the kind of, you know, stress, anxiety that you might be going through at this point of time with so many people getting affected during the pandemic. So we have someone very special who's going to be guiding you through a process of just unwinding, of relaxing and letting, in all, letting out all the negativity that you have. So do stay tuned in. And now I would like to invite Chavi Jain to our discussion. A little bit about Chavi before we start. So Chavi is a trained yogini practicing the science of living and preksha meditation. Chavi believes in the natural way of life and she is steadfast on making lifestyle changes. Her peers describe her as charismatic, sensitive, and a fun combination of exuberance as well as maturity. Spirituality for her is a way of life and she knows to perfectly balance her materialistic ambitions with her inner quests. Chavi is currently majoring in communications and design. Uh, and Chavi, yeah, the floor is open to you for you to take us through the beautiful experience you have in store for us. Hi, everyone. Happy, happy, happy evening to everyone here. Um, first of all, thank you so much. I think I really enjoyed listening to all of you speak on this topic. It's um, so personal to me. And um, without any further ado, I would just like to start Okay, can everyone see my screen? Uh, yes, it's just loading. Yeah, we can see it now. Okay, so um, today we're gonna do a complete body relaxation. And even before we start, um, the first question that comes to all of your mind must be, why must I listen to her this 19, 20, whatever your old girl, what is she gonna do to me? Personally, I have nothing major to say, but I will just say one simple thing that is, I want, I want to reach out to people with the most simplest thing of being able to relax ourselves. And I'm personally someone who's never satisfied with just one dimensional answers. I like to know things from different perspectives. So all I'm going to say is, I promise you these 30 minutes that have been given to me of your life will be worth it. And I'm completely uh, headed in that direction. So let's get started. What is something that really relaxes you? Like, I would like you all to type it in the chat box or even unmute yourself and speak, whatever works. Um, you know, that one thing that you're like, oh, this has relaxed me. At the end of the day, that's something you really want. Yeah. If the host can read it out because I'm sharing. Yeah, screen. so I think Dheeraj says music, Archana says art, Sanjana says music and dance, uh, Vijay says music, uh, Aditya says reading his favorite book, Dhruv says travel. I think we right. have many answers coming. So um, we actually have multiplicity of answers like we heard, but I think the most simplest way and what I'm going to focus on today to relax and release stress will be an answer that all of us know, which is sleep. Now, why am I discussing this? Uh, we'll get to that 
very soon. But let's start talking about what happens before we go to sleep currently, and you'll all be able to relate to what's here. Now, what's happening in the night before we go to sleep? There is no specific distinction. Now we're sitting and you know having meetings with our teammates. We're reading our own stuff that we have to make. I'm pretty sure all of you are able to relate with the pictures that are here. Why am I saying that this is something that is going to come in the middle of your body's complete relaxation? Before that, I will take you through what we were before this whole urbanized, civilized structure came to our life. Before, in the times where all our ancestors, we were all living in hamlets. Um, early in the day, it's a livelihood. Everybody, there's a hustle bustle. All the work goes on in the day, and we go back to sleep in the night, where there's minimal light. We have the nature around, and whatever light comes up from the natural objects of light, that's the stars or the moon, or maybe a little lamps here and there. Why did I choose that is the one way that we woke up, we knew that, okay, this is morning and this is night. So when there was morning, you went to work. When it was night, you went to sleep, you went to take rest. And how we knew it was morning a day, of course, depending on the season of the year in summers, our days were long and in winters, our nights were long. So we knew we had to get up and go to work in the morning. So we slept and woke up like that. Now, how did that happen? Did we have some magic going on? Was there an alarm? Okay, maybe like I showed in the previous slide, a, a hen or a cock, you know, uh, so you know it's morning, but what is it that actually happens? There's a mechanism in our body, which is called a circadian rhythm. Now, what is this rhythm? It tells us when we have to sleep and when we have to wake up. Now, what happens because of this rhythm is that your body is automatically preparing itself. And remember one thing that is, our body is a complete result of habits. Something that you keep doing and telling it over and over, over and over will become a habit, will become a rhythm, will become a mechanism, whatever you may want to call it. Now, if it's just simply sleeping and waking up, then uh, why is it that so many of us are waking up like the left side of my screen or sleeping like the left side of my screen and what we're trying to achieve becomes this. It is... Um, the quality of our sleep. Why is it that we're not able to access and experience the best sleep and get relaxed and wake up like full of energy, enthusiasm, like you want to kill the day and you want to nail what we're going to do? Here, the sleep enemy. Any guesses on who the sleep enemy is? Okay. You can type in your answers and send it. Nevertheless, this uh, very respected, um, honorable, can anyone tell me who's on the screen right now? Yeah, this is um, Sir Thomas Alba Edison, one who invented light. Now our problem is not with this gentleman who has given this world this huge bane, but you will know why I'm calling this a bane in this very series. What is happening with light is that essential process work and we do whatever that we have to. But now these blue photon rays are coming from everywhere but the sun. From our phones, from our laptops, from our tablets, our whatever device that we're using, we're constantly getting it in our body. So now our body doesn't really know when is it day? When is it night? When am I to sleep? When am I to wake up? Because when it's not the sun, it's our devices. And anyway, these blue photon rays are constantly becoming a part of our system. Why is this a problem? Is that's because our body secretes a hormone called melatonin. Now, this is responsible for the sleep structure, for how we sleep, how we wake up. All of this goes on with melatonin. Melatonin is secreted one to two hours before we start sleeping. Now that is when you know you will start feeling all of these signs, all of the symptoms that you, you start yawning, you'll start feeling tired, your eyes will give up. And for most people who use phones at night, you will be able to relate to this picture. You know, you, you don't know what to do without their phone, but you'll still be staring into it, but you'll be so tired. So all of these are symptoms that your body is telling that I have started secreting the melatonin hormone. So please, start preparing yourself and go to sleep. But what we do instead is continuing with our devices. 
Now, what does this melatonin do, and where does it stay? It's at the behind of our eyes. Now, we all know that we perceive whatever that we do first as inverted images. That happens at the end of our eye, and then we perceive whatever that we perceive because of melatonin. And what happens after, as a result, is the REM sleep. We're not able to process because of the light that enters. It hits the back of our eyes, and the rods and cones, which are basically supposed to do the job of inverting uh, objects, so we see them like we do, keeps happening even in the night. So in the night, there's constant movement of your eyes, and you don't get complete deep sleep. Every night. So I think from all that I have said, the only take that I want everybody to understand is that please, 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 do not compromise on your sleep. Sleep is your priority, and it is the easiest way to relax. It's the easiest way to unwind and just listen to your body. Respect your body, and your body will do all the work that you want it to. why am i explaining all of this to you is because i'm going to take you through a process first part of which will be breathing and then we will go into a physical exercise but um just as a disclaimer i would like to show what i'm looking at and what i so when we breathe okay just assume that our lungs are like balloons so what happens when you blow into a balloon it expands so when you expand the balloon when you blow into the balloon for example now your lung you inhale so the balloon expands and when you exhale the balloon contracts now that same structure happens with your stomach so in short when you're breathing in your stomach comes out and when you exhale your stomach goes in and the last part of will be will be the physical exercise for which i have just a few instructions and i will stop sharing my screen now um i would request everybody for all those it is possible um to you know to lie down uh, i would request you all to lie down and uh, be part of the process because that's the best way to do it most efficient for those who cannot i understand that if you're in your work spaces you're in your offices and all of that um it's okay if you want to sit but wherever you are um i just want to give everybody 2 minutes of time so everybody can relocate themselves if they have to and then we can get started with our process yeah wherever you are in case you want to be seated just make yourselves comfortable and make sure that uh, you're in a position to keep your eyes open closed with shavi and in case you want to relocate and lie down you can do that as well it's your choice okay. and just just another thing shavi before you start uh so we don't we do not have any vote of thanks or anything at the end of the session we want to leave you with an experience so as you go through the experience that chavi is providing we will end the session when the time comes in case you are very involved in the session in the experience you can continue to be in that state all right on that note um for everybody who's sitting uh gently uh um, close your eyes Spine erect, rested on a back support or your chair comfortably. Neck erect, body glues. Relax your shoulders. Cross leg position would be best, but if you're on a chair, then make sure your all the joints of your body are in ninety degrees. So your knees relax, your ankles relaxed. Now gently close your eyes. and be with your body we will take all our focus slowly 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 inhale om 1 om 2 om 3 om 4 hold your breath om 1 om 2 om 3 On four, on five, on six, on seven, on eight. Exhale. On one, on two, on three, on four, on five, on six, on seven, on eight. Inhale. On one, on two, on three, on four, on five. Hold. On one, on two, on three, on four. 
and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8. Exhale and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8. Inhale deeply. Exhale completely. Inhale. Exhale. No movement in the body. Eyes closed. Remain with your body. Watch your breath slow down. Inhale. Exhale. Completely. Inhale. Take all your focus to the right toe. Relax, relax, relax. All my right thumbnails, relax, relax, relax. My right foot, my right heel, my right hand. Ankle, relax, relax, relax. My left toe, left toe nail, left finger. My left feet, my left heel, the ankle, complete feet, relax. 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 Both my calves, both my legs. Both my knees relax. Both my thighs, the back of my thighs relax. relax. My focus now on the complete lower half of my body. Relax, relax. My waist, my hips, the wave between my legs. My buttocks completely relaxed. My lower abdomen, my belly button, my stomach, the small intestines, the large intestines relax. Kidney, my liver, my spleen. Relax, relax, relax. My hips, my chest, my lungs, my ribs, my diaphragm. My heart, my chest, my 
shoulders, my shoulder blades, relax, relax. My shoulders, my arms, my elbows, relax. Around my wrist, both my little fingers, both my ring fingers, both my middle fingers, both my index, both my thumbs, complete and relax. relax. My knees, my arms, complete upper body relax. My neck, my throat, my shoulder blades, my upper back relax. My middle back, my lower back, relax, relax, relax. My spine, the nerves running through my spine, complete back is relaxed, relax. My throat, my thyroid gland, my vocal cords, my esophagus, relax. My jaws, my chin, my lower lip, relax, relax. My gums, my teeth, from my molars to my premolars, the canines and my incisors. My lips, my upper lip, my cheeks, relax. Both my ears, relax. My eye socket, the under eye, my eyelids, my eyes, completely relaxed. My eyelashes, the eyebrows, my forehead. Relax, 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 relax. My head, the skull within the brain, every single cell of my brain has relaxed. Relax. 
every single organ, my head, every hair, every strand of hair is relaxed. All my hair follicles from root to tip Every cell of my body has been drained. Every muscle has been relaxed from my head to toe. Every organ, every bone is relaxed. Thank your body for being there for you, come what me. Everything stopped, but your body didn't. It never gave up on you. My heart kept beating. I kept breathing. My digestion kept happening. Every organ of my body, every cell of my body, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for keeping me alive in a deadly pandemic. Thank you for being the most consistent Thank you for being the most resilient. Inhale. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For all those who would want to carry that state, uh, can continue to do so. Um, I recommend everybody does a relaxation for themselves before you all go to sleep. This way you relax every organ and thank you for joining in and giving me this opportunity.